Use the force, Luke. Live long and prosper. I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Shut up and take my money. By Grabthar's hammer. <laughs> what a saving. One does not simply walk into Mordor. X never, ever marks the spot. Winter is coming. You're a wizard, Harry. Stay a while and listen. Hey, old Kermit. Frog here. The ties are cool. So say we all. This is, is a, a play, play on nerds. Welcome, everyone, to episode 72 of A Play on Nerds. We're getting close to that 100 coming up very soon. <laughs> yep, right <laughs> in, around the corner. In another year, maybe. A year um, and a half, probably. <laughs> but uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, uh, Jarman, and with me is... I'm Steve, the co-host. Steve! And today we're going to be covering The Great Muppet Caper. The in our Great ongoing Muppet Caper. series of... Uh, I'm watching all the Muppet movies, and Steve's watching all the Star Trek movies, and we're reviewing them one by one. It's, it's I like that we got, uh, we didn't do this on purpose, but I'm like that you are introducing the Muppet movies on your intro episodes, and I'm yeah. introducing the Star Trek stuff on my episodes. That works out very well. I just thought that, I just realized that, and good good on us. Oh, and beyond that, they also have like a similar release schedule, like oh, when, yeah. they came, when they came out. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool. So, like, the first one, uh, Star Trek, came out in 1979. Mm -hmm. Muppet Muppet Movie was also 1979. Uh, Star Trek II was 82, and Muppet Caper was 81. Mm -hmm. So, so far, we're, like, right back and forth in the same year. So, it's just pretty cool. No one was the one after that. I didn't check that far. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) But I think they get a little bit more off as they go, because there's more uh, Star Trek movies than there are uh, Muppet movies. But we'll get there. So, it's been about a week and a half since we recorded. Uh, yep. What has been up with you, good sir? Living that adult life. Adult Baby with life. a child. What? Baby, what? Oh, God, it's terrible. Uh, are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, she's a, a screaming bundle of joy. Oh, goodness. And the, the old th- everyone says it, and it's cliche enough that you see it in movies and television. It's like, it's the greatest and worst thing you'll ever do. And that's... That cliche is absolutely correct. Greatest and worst. It's the most rewarding thing. Your smiles and giggles like make me go. So that's basically been your life the past couple yeah. of weeks. I got that dad strength now. <laughs> Anything out of the ordinary happen since we last uh, recorded? No, she's a little bit sick for the first time. Oh, okay. It just happens. Sometimes she gets fatter? Sick. We're trying to fatten her up. We really are. We're pushing. We have a weight check-in on Friday, I think. Yeah, for our listeners, it's an ongoing series of fattening up Steve's child because <laughs> she's plumping her up. <laughs> she's skinny. She's a skinny. She one. is petite. <laughs> but yeah, That's so, so we're, we're trying to fatten her up. We got to check in in like a week, so we're just pushing. I like it. Yeah, one more of that food. Um, we got her a jumperoo. What is that? So it's this like, like you know the 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 tripod things from War of the Worlds. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> So those things, but like she's at the top of it. It's, so she like gets to bounce in it. It's got three legs on it. Does it move? It bounces up and down. It's got like a spring thing in the back. Oh, okay, but not forward and backward. No, no, no. I don't believe so. She's her legs barely even at the like lowest setting. Her legs barely touch the ground. <laughs> she's still so little. Does she like it? Oh yeah. Because we, the, what we love is that there's hooks and places on it that we can hook her toys on. Oh. So all of our favorite baby toys have little hooks on them. These little like C rings that connect and you can slip between them. Nice. And so we love clipping those on things. And then even if she drops it, she can find it again. And it's like a whole new world again to her. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, book was here. Like it's, <laughs> it's brilliant to watch. That's so cute. Um, and we started her on some solid foods. Very cool. Like meat? No, no, no. Not meat. No. Um, <laughs> you start with like barley and rice cereal. It's really fine ground. So like an oatmeal, but also really fine ground, like mush. Gotcha. And you mix it with a little bit of formula and you just slowly build her up on it. And she, at the beginning, she really was getting maybe a quarter of uh, it. Now she's eating 80% of it pretty much every time. That's awesome. Step in the right direction. Anna started making baby food. Oh, like homemade. Yeah, we got a food processor and Anda did carrots and squash. Very good. Very healthy. Yeah. And we have these ice cube trays now. 
that are exactly one ounce and then you fill them with baby food and then you can pop out baby food an ounce at a time. Like it's friggin' genius what they came up with for parents with, with now. <laughs> Modern technology. Modern tech, yeah. Thank you, science. Thank you, science. What about you? What have you been up to? I've had well, so much baby stuff. What, what's, <laughs> what's going on in real adult world? I went to go see George Takei speak at Ooh. Rollins College. Oh, my. Um, for those crazy people who don't know who he is, he's, he played um, Sulu in the original Star Trek. And uh, he went on from there to do a lot of voice acting. And Howard Stern did a lot of that. He became popular recently as an activist for uh, gay rights and that kind of thing because he's now openly gay as soon as uh, yeah. marriage equality was key an issue. Um, and I've now met him twice. Not met him, but I met him once at Dragon Con. I took a picture with cool. him. Cool. And his husband was there. And his husband was also there this time at the speech. But uh, I just saw him talk about being in um, very apropos uh, talk about being in the camps when he was a child uh, during World War II because they were scared of the Japanese. So they rounded up every Japanese American and put them into camps in America. And they don't talk about this in the history books, but uh, he lived in a camp for a couple of years uh, as a child with his family. And they took, his parents had regular jobs. They were taken away from that. They mm -hmm. lost their house. They lost their jobs because they were put in a camp and they had to live wow. there. So, um, it's crazy that we did that in America, and now we're doing crazy shit like that in our own government again. Yeah, <sighs> winning. Yeah, so we're that's doing happening. it, guys. We're bringing it back to the fifties. <laughs> oh God, forties. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So it was very uh, inspirational speech, and he talked about um, going through that whole process again when in the seventies and during Star Trek too, when he was he had to hide being gay and uh, going to. Uh, gay, gay bars to try to find anybody like him and that he could be open with and he had to be so careful because his whole career could be ruined um, yeah so it was it was very inspirational speech and he's well, still good. very much with it at 70 something years old i'm glad glad to hear it uh so now i think it's time to what move on to some nerd news yeah let's do it nerd news Woo! it's time for nerdy news So uh, I've got a good story this week, and I think I disappointed last week because I didn't have a clever name, mm, and, sad. I and I regret that. I regret that. Sad. So um, my uh, story is called Green Eggs and Nothing, mm -hmm. because uh, the nation's bacon reserve has hit a 50-year low. I heard something about that. What the does that Ohio mean? Port Council has basically said that demand is outpacing what they can supply. Wait, there's an um, Ohio Port Council? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so that was the first piece of news. All right. <laughs> it was the, that, that existed. <laughs> um, they, uh, the, it just can't keep up with the demand. And that in December of 2016, pork belly inventory totaled, this number boggled my mind, 17.8 million pounds. Wow. Which is the lowest level since 1957. Wow, that's not good. Yeah. So basically... Th these are the facts, and then and then the company came out and was like, "Hey guys, I know these numbers look bad, but we definitely won't run out." <laughs> so I'm reassured. Oh, good. <laughs> I think it's because of the uh, hipsters make putting bacon in everything. It's like just uh, it's taking our reserves away of bacon. That's right. Um, yeah. So that's my news story. <laughs> possible possible bacon shortage. <laughs> hey, that's important. Bacon's awesome. It is. I just had it's important to nerds everywhere. I just had a bacon salad earlier today. Damn so. right, because one cancels out the other. <laughs> yeah, it was like a spinach salad with bacon. I was like, oh, great. That's and cheese. Like, mm, cheese. It did have feta cheese on it, too. It did, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it when you said it. <laughs> I'm trying to be kind of healthy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, my nerdy news, I have two different things. Okay. Uh, one, I'm sure you heard about this. John Hurt, the actor, has passed away. Uh, the, oh. And it's sad and it's weird because everyone's kind of like hearkening back to 1984, the movie uh, in the book, because mm -hmm. um, it was basically about this uh, post-apocalyptic future with this like very fascist uh, big brother government. And that's kind of what we're going towards right now. Mm -hmm. And John Hurt starred in that movie, the movie adaptation of the book. But also he was the war doctor. And Doctor Who series, which is a great episode and great character. And he was Ollivander in uh, Harry Potter, the guy who picked out the wands for all the students. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so a lot of nerd connections there, but great actor. He was also an alien. He was the guy who had the first chest burster in Alien. Which yeah, is he really, did. Yep. So it's a, it's a big loss, but he was an and old, Jim and, Henson connection. Oh, go for it. He was the storyteller and the lead character uh, in Jim Henson's storyteller, which was a um, basically telling old Grimm's fairy tales and like base level fairy tales with cool puppetry and really dark visuals and mm. demons and movie or giant TV monsters. Show? Uh, TV show, TV series. Oh, cool! And he was the uh, he was the narrator and the storyteller for the first year, first season. That's awesome. He's a great voice. So yes, it's appropriate. He'll always be my storyteller. That's awesome. And he was. I just saw the movie Jackie, which is up for Oscar consideration, mm-hmm. all about Jackie Kennedy uh, with uh, Nick, uh, Natalie Portman playing Jackie Kennedy, and he played like a priest in that movie. I think it's one of his final films, but a uh, kind of a boring movie. Don't recommend okay. it. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, good. My other piece of nerd news is uh, Cloak and Dagger, which is a very uh, lesser known Marvel comic, okay. is getting a TV show on the ABC Family Channel owned okay. by Disney, uh, which is now called Freeform. They don't call it ABC Family anymore. So the strange connection for this for me was that uh, a long time ago when my parents remarried when I was eight years old, my stepfather had a second marriage before this third marriage, uh, and his stepson had a big a collection of comics Mm -hmm. and his stepson just abandoned them and left them with Scott, my stepfather. So I got all these comics. And so I went through them one year. This is almost before the internet. So I had to go through catalogs to find out how much these comics were worth. Yeah. And I found one that wasn't worth a lot, but it was number one. It was the first comic in the cloak and dagger series. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I currently own in plastic wrap, the first cloak and dagger comic. um, And I'm hoping if this show that the show does well, just so that my comic number one will be worth something. That's <laughs> and I right. Can sell it. It'd be twelve dollars cool. instead of four. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, basically, the dagger is a chick who makes light daggers as weapons that can heal people as well, and she also can heal people. That makes their, sense. Of their yep. addictions, so she like if you're addicted to heroin, she can touch you and you'll lose your addiction. Apparently. Okay. Cool. And the cloak guy is a uh, African American guy who can teleport himself and others and can trap people in a dark dimension so it's pretty out there but yeah that's a tv show coming soon to freeform well cool yeah and that's my nerdy news yeah so now we're going to talk about the great muppet caper the second movie in the muppet film franchise there'll be spectacle there'll be fantasy there'll be daring do and stuff like you would never see hey a movie All right. So what do you for, first impressions? First impressions. I'll give a vague first impressions. Yeah, I and felt, then we'll go through the plot. I think that's word for us in the past. Right. I in the last movie we talked about, the Muppet movie. Was this called the Muppet movie? 1979? Yep, that's it. Um there were slow parts. Some of the songs were too long in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still enjoyed it, but I was like, eh, it's just like it was lacking in some categories. This one I felt uh was much better paced. Okay. It felt like a just like a good movie that kept moving. I I never felt bored. I never felt like mm-hmm. anything went too long. Um, it didn't feel as like um, the songs weren't as strong. Like it, they was there's no there's no scenes in this movie that I was like, oh, that scene really sticks out. But the as a whole, I'm like, this is a much more palatable movie. I could watch again. It went went by faster. It just it was like I felt like they they figured out what was Good. bad about the first one. It's kind of like Star Trek one and two. Actually, it's funny though it's parallels because Star Trek one was slow, and then the second Star Trek at the con they figured the shit out that was wrong and they sped it they up. Got it right, right. Yeah, and I, I felt the same thing with this one. Like it was sped up. It felt like a regular movie. I was engaged. I liked it. So there you go. That's my initial well, impressions. All right, so uh, let's start. Take us through the movie. Oh, I was hoping you would do that because I can to remember. do it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you tell put me the... on the spot for Star Trek. So. <laughs> well, so kind of a. I'll I'll come I'll come back in as I remember any things. But uh, how okay, does it so start it out? Okay, so it opens on a balloon in the sky. And, right, and a very is... a very meta uh, scene of of the credits. I like that. Yeah, Gonzo, Kermit, and uh, Fozzie all floating along, breaking the fourth wall, left and right. Very Deadpool-esque, like commenting on the uh, credits as it goes by. Yep. And then at the end, they ask, how do we start the movie? And he pulls a ripcord, and they plummet to the ground. 
and they fall into the middle of a busy city street. Mm-hmm. Bigger budget in this movie, I feel. Probably. Seems like they it. had proven themselves, made a lot of money at that point. Yeah. A lot of extras, a lot of uh, fancy stuff. So as they land, a musical number breaks out. And in the middle of the musical number, a jewel heist takes place. Yes. Involving Lady Holiday, who is played by Diana Rigg. So hot. And still not too <laughs> shabby in Game of Thrones. Yes. She's in Game of Thrones as uh, the Lady of Tyrell. Yeah. yeah. And she, she was on the Avengers the mm-hmm. UK series, not the Marvel comics. Um, and she wore those skin tight uh, cat suits. And she was, yeah, gorgeous. she did. She wore the hell out of them. She was gorgeous. <laughs> so she's in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the song that comes out that I've heard Steve sing since I can remember, which I never knew where it came from. Hey, a movie. Like you've always, you've always brought <laughs> hey, that up randomly. <laughs> yeah, that's like your thing. You said that a lot. So I finally get to hear that song. I was excited. Good. So then Hey, A Movie happens. Great musical number with mayhem and monsters all over the place and mishaps. Uh, and then it ends with them taking a picture. And then the picture is in the paper and it's uh, Chronicle hires uh, uh, reporter twins or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of covering the jewel heist. So now they're at their boss's office. Which is Kermit and um, is it Grover? Kermit and Fozzie. 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 They're supposed to be twins. So like twin nothing alike. But, but also... They... Bef- before we go forward, Gonzo had a hilarious line that made me just crack up, which was, um, it was all these movies so far have this, these occasional lines are just ridiculous. Uh, Gonzo lands, falls, and they're like, are you okay? And he goes, it's okay, I landed on my head. It's okay, I landed on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line so much. <laughs> we crack up. It's okay, I landed on my head. So they're in their boss's office getting balled out. And Kermit asked for money for them to get tickets to go to England and talk to Lady Holiday. Mm-hmm. Who had so been robbed. Big, it, that's his big plan. Boss doesn't like it. Uh, they get basically thrown out and told to go to England. And then you get a good Frank Oz cameo. Yes. He's one of the reporters. Uh, and Gonzo yells, stop the presses and and stops everyone from working. It's just brilliant. It's really oh, I, ha- I have to mention this. So. Uh, a listener of our show, Sean Vanderloo, who does the Russian mm-hmm. Robot podcast, hit one of his new yep. co-hosts, Josh. Uh, they do a segment now where they try to stump him with trivia questions. And he they did a Star Trek thing, they had other questions, and he got most of them right-ish. And then one question, they said, who voiced Yoda in Star Wars? And I was like, oh, Frank Oz. And he couldn't get it. He didn't know Frank Oz voiced Yoda. That dumb bastard. <laughs> I'm okay with saying that about Josh because Josh is a great co-host of that show, but he is he thinks he knows everything, and that that, that should be obvious. And plus, like for Steve, because Steve loves all. Uh, That's true. That's obvious to me because Henson I'm a stuff. weirdo. And Frank Oz is great. He's a good director, good voice actor. Oh yeah, I love Frank Oz. Everything. We just rewatched Blues Brothers the other day. There you go. Maybe smile. Wait, so he directed Blues Brothers? Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. Anyways, so they get go. They're on a plane. Uh, they're in crates like animals in the in the uh, yeah, hole because they are animals, and they think they're landing in in Italy in uh, England. But now nah, planes land in Indo- in Italy. You're landing in England, so they toss them out, <laughs> which is they great. crash land into a pond in the middle of of England, and they meet a nice British gentleman who gives them some recommendations on uh, where they're going to stay. I really enjoyed that scene. It was just yeah. subtle and nice and sweet. Let's see places where you can park your carcasses, bus terminals. River Banks, the Happiness Hotel. Happiness Hotel? That sounds great. What's wrong with bus terminals? <laughs> it's free. Oh, we'll like that one. <laughs> How about the Happiness Hotel? What about bus terminal? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they so get they... to the Happiness Hotel, and it's a place uh, in shambles, uh, but it's very jolly and happy. There's a. Yep. Pops is running the front desk. Mm-hmm. Is he an ongoing character? He's yeah, he's been a, a long standing Muppet character. Okay, because I didn't recognize him. Yeah, Pops. So um, what I what I did notice here, there's mm-hmm. a musical number that breaks out about the Happiness Hotel and The Happiness Hotel. All of your favorite Muppet people are there. No, already. there are bugs. Uh and there are mice. I just noticed this. There are barely any, if not any at all, female uh Muppet Muppet people. Yeah, they use, you know, Piggy, obviously Janice. Um, no, the, I'm saying like they're all voiced by men. Y- mm. 
well, it's just on average there are many fewer female characters. You're right, so therefore there are less need for women. But like, there's, like there's two there or three are, per movie. Are there any female voices in the Muppet cast at all? Um, typically peripheral characters. Wow, that's a that's yeah. a strike against them. I'll say that. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, there's no females. Oh, there are tons of females throughout uh, Henson history, mm. but the core was always the guys. Right. It's just who he had available, I guess, at the time. Yeah. But if they did it nowadays, like, I feel like they have more female voices. And think of it voices. this way. Miss Piggy was a one-time character who mm. was originally voiced by a different puppeteer. I didn't know that. And, but then she gave, the, the audiences loved her, and people loved her, so then it became a much bigger thing. But no one could have predicted that. Oh, uh, okay. She That's was supposed to be a throwaway character. I like it. Yeah. And then she became Miss Piggy forever. Interesting. An icon yeah. in her own right. I hope the Muppets go forth in a healthy way in the future and have more movies and that when they do, they have more female puppeteers and female voices. That'd be nice. Well, good. Yes. So they check in the Happiness Hotel. They choose the sneak out in the middle of the night payment option. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Uh, they get to their room. They decide that they're going to go see Lady Holiday in the morning and get some shut eye. And then they get shut up in their bed. <laughs> yeah, the, the Murphy bed that flies up. Yeah, the, the Murphy bed. Wall. And then... Light goes out, and then it's the next day. Mm-hmm. What happens next, Jaron? I'm sick um, of telling this whole story. You'd say something now. I think next is when we meet Miss Piggy in this movie, right? Yep. So she's she's uh, basically going in to try to work for Miss uh, Lady Halliday, mm-hmm. and she yeah. lets her work as an assistant, basically. Yeah, ha- Miss Piggy goes in hoping to be a model and takes in her whole modeling right. like, portfolio, but it's all the same look. Yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> This is me wreaking grandeur. Being aloof. <laughs> Being demure. Ah, daring. Interesting range of emotions. You think so? And she kept saying, this is me looking yeah. happy. It's me looking sad. <laughs> no, Daring. <it's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so Lady Holiday h- hires her basically as a, an assistant. Oh, and another and great one of those one-liners. Out, is so excited. Yeah, go Is that... Uh, Lady Holiday talks about her brother and not liking him and all this stuff and about her yeah. jewels being stolen. And her fabulous baseball diamond. And P- P- Miss Piggy's like, why are you telling me all this? And she's like, it's plot exposition. It has to go somewhere. <laughs> yep. Very self-aware movie. I-, I love that line. And that's when I wrote down uh, all the musical segments are better. They're shorter and more snappy. Yep. They really yep. are. I like that. So Miss Piggy has an interview. She gets it. Uh, then she runs into Kermit. While she is in Lady Holiday's office, Kermit comes in, mistakes her for Lady Holiday. They have a very romantic interaction, I will say. It seems is this gonna be an ongoing thing where every time Miss Piggy sees Kermit, she's just like, I love you automatically. Yeah, that's kind of the recurring theme. I like it. <laughs> um you're gonna see it a few more times. That's Don't fine. Worry. And so then she gets him to ask her dinner. Mm-hmm. And she has to, and like, uh, he just tells her where he thinks she lives. She's like, that's exactly yeah. where I live. I don't know, some sort of highbrow street somewhere. That is absolutely right. Highbrow street. How did you guess? <laughs> so now uh, he goes, He goes. you know, the boys leave to get ready for the night. Uh, and they go back to the Happiness Hotel. They meet the cab driver who lives at the Happiness Hotel but doesn't know how to get there. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> uh, makes it to the Happiness Hotel, crashes in through the front lobby. <laughs> Which I love. Uh, and then drives out and then leads to one of my favorite moments where the Swedish chef comes out with a giant pot with a steering wheel in it. Pop says, oh, steering wheel soup for dinner again. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite over the top jokes. Oh, he says, steering wheel good. soup for dinner. And then they, uh, the chick says, again, <laughs> again, again. <laughs> that was great. Uh, and then all the members of the Happiness Hotel are, well, no, first just, um, Grover is trying to like convince him to let him come with him. Fozzie. To... Fozzie. Damn it. I keep calling him Grover. You're not wrong there. Frank Oz did also play Grover. So <laughs> oh, there I can't you go. Too mad at you. <laughs> but Fozzie is trying to go with Kermit on this date with Miss Piggy, uh, mm. which is just horrible friend behavior. But um, because remember, in this movie, they're t- they're identical twins. Supposedly. Yes. So that's why it's hard for them to be apart because they're <laughs> identical twins. Don't forget that. And uh, but yet Fozzie thinks that means that everyone can come. So basically everyone is coming with Kermit to this uh, date with Miss Piggy. Yep. But this comes. My favorite scenes of the whole movie are with John Cleese in this house. This oh very, my gosh, so very good. British house. 
<laughs> so amazing. <laughs> so we see we see John Cleese on Highbrow Street in this house that yep. she says she lives in, as John Cleese and this very other very British woman sitting at a dinner talking about what they want to do with their lives, and it's just yeah. the, the funniest stilted British humor. Neville, mm. am I boring you? What oh, dear? I said, am I boring you? Boring me? Oh. Oh, 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 that's a good one. I, I'm having the time of my life, dear. Hey, what did you say? A pig is climbing up the outside of the house. Yes, 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 I believe I do, yes. I thought so. Oh, you, you'd have to look a long way to find a chap who was more, um, <laughs> stimulated than I am, yes. Oh, oh dear me. Last time I was bored, um, and never by you, my little armada. What was that? Just making a point, huh? I mean, if I was bored, I'd, I'd go out and buy something, wouldn't I? Like cheese or, or quail things. Hmm, something like that. Yes, I suppose you would. Yes, of course I would, Dan. It's a sort of spur of the moment fellow I am. What would you buy if you were bored? Ah, a jar of Carl's foot jelly? I'd like to come with you and help you pick one up. Oh, that isn't necessary, Dorcas. There's no need for you to leave the house. I wouldn't mind. Haven't been outside for 12 years. Well, well the weather's been most disappointing now. Still, there's no reason for me to stay here all the time. The children are gone. The pets are dead. The butler's been discharged. No one ever visits us. Uh, and then Miss Piggy climbs the side of the building, breaks in, <laughs> has a run-in with John Cleese. No, no, no. She sneaks around them at first until Kermit gets there, answers the front door, yeah, <laughs> lets Kermit in, and then has to pretend that they're the servants while she takes him through a round-the-world tour through the house. <laughs> All the while, John Cleese following after them. He's like, uh, what, are you, what are you doing here? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, may, may I help you? We need a, we need a restaurant recommendation. <laughs> uh, how about the Dubonnet Club? But... That's not more. Of, that's not really a restaurant. It's more of a it's supper more of a cl- club. Yes. Uh, did you tell them that? Yes, I told them that, but uh, they still want to go. <laughs> Got to go, Jeeves. No time for cocktails. <laughs> uh, and so they go, and they go to a really fancy, ritzy dinner club, mm-hmm. like tuxedo wear kind of dinner club. And they get a table, and uh, Lady Holiday also shows up. She's having dinner there, and she's wearing this luxurious necklace filled with diamonds. Mm-hmm. On purpose. She's there with her awful brother, Nikki. Mickey? Played by Charles Grodin. I love Charles Grodin. <laughs> I love him in general, but it's just. It's I funny. feel like I he had like a really short window of time where he did a lot of great stuff and then he kind of disappeared. He became like a talk show host or like a. He did his talk show. He has his own radio show, I think. Yeah, very, I think he's conservative stuff. Yeah. But he's not British. And he's playing her brother, but she's British and he's not. I didn't. Really and he get has that. no accent yeah. <laughs> at all. <laughs> oh, and also in this is in this restaurant. There's um, jokes about uh, uh, one of the members there cheating on his wife and stuff. Like, there's always these things. These 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 two movies that are not kid friendly jokes that only the adults are going to get, which mm-hmm. I like. I appreciate that. But like, because yep. I think Kermit says, "Is it Kermit or um, Fozzie?" It's like, "Oh, you're here with your wife," and he's like, "No, my wife's at home," and he's like. If she's at home, why is she with you? He's like, this oh, isn't it's, my uh, wife. Gonzo when he's taking pictures. Oh, right, right. <laughs> you take a picture with you with your wife. My well, wife's not feeling very well. Maybe she should go home. My wife is at home. Ah, <laughs> next table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then there is a uh, musical number, number, Stepping Out with a Star. And this is when I noticed that the shots were better in this movie, too. And I was like, who directed this one? Jim Henson directed Jim, this, this one. This first director directorial debut, right? The movie, and it looked better and was more impressive shots than the first movie. So, like, I think he's obviously good at directing. So, there mm-hmm. you go. Yeah, that was a better thing too. So, where do we leave off? Uh, the musical number in the in the restaurant. Musical number in the restaurant. Uh, Nikki is shown to be the bad guy that is behind the jewel thievery. He's having the models help him steal stuff from his own sister. There is another luxurious musical number, uh, the first time it happens, which ends with a Miss Piggy tap dancing part. Oh, right. Brilliant. Yes, that was nice. And during right at the end of the musical number, Gonzo's flash goes off and then someone grabs Lady Holiday's jewels and runs off with them. And Gonzo gets a picture. Gets a picture of the jewel thief. But then because Lady Holiday's jewels are gone, Kermit realizes that Piggy is not Lady Holiday and that she has betrayed him. 
Right. Like she always does in every movie. <laughs> she did it real bad in the last one. Real bad in that last one. This one's pretty bad, too. <laughs> yeah. She's pretty awful. So that's that's it for her. She calls it a night, walks off under a sad lamplight. I even wrote down that whole scene with the red room from bathroom was great. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, because they're basically using the bathroom in the Happiness Hotel as a red room for developing film. And everyone in the Happiness Hotel needs to go to the bathroom. Yep. Uh, they're holding it up. It was fun. Gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, they catch a picture of the jewel thief. Right. Ladies dancing behind Lady Holiday. And then after that, we go to Kermit sulking. I, I wrote down Peter Falk. Explanation Peter point. Falk. <laughs> yeah, Kermit goes to a local pond and you get to see Jerry Nelson and his daughter Christine make a little cameo. And then Peter Falk shows up, makes his cameo. He says, tells, okay, I, I got this story right here. <laughs> you opened a restaurant. What do you say? I can't remember. You know, I see the way you're sitting there, and I see the way you got your hand around that little shoe, and that's all I need. I know your whole story. What? You do? Absolutely. I know exactly what happened to you. What? Well, I'll tell you, friend, what happened was you and your brother in law, Bernie, you cashed in your stock certificates and your insurance policy, and you went out and bought a dry cleaning establishment. Huh? Now another place opens up down the street, and it's charging less. And they're getting the stuff out faster because they got more help. It's not your fault. Hmm. Right? All right, so Bernie comes to you. He says, I want you to buy me out. He says, he's fed up. Hmm? Well, you kids are growing up. You never see him. And all of a sudden, they're turning into juvenile delinquents, and your wife is saying to you, listen, you care more about this lousy business than you care about me. And the equipment breaks down, and your sister moves in with you because that jerk Bernie, he went and joined the circus. Well, you had it up to here, right? You didn't know what to do. So what did you do? You did the only thing you could do. You dumped the business for us all. And who did you sell it to? Who? You sold it to that jerk down the street, that slob that had been burying you for a year. Then you took whatever money you had left, and you sunk it into the glass slipper business. That's your story, my friend. Not a happy one, is it? You know what you sold to? You sold to that jerk down the street, Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Falk is a great cameo. <laughs> and then the bubble is burst when Kermit says, no, that is absolutely incorrect. That I love that. That's not what happened. <laughs> Even a little bit. Um, Didn't he say, like, it's amazing how wrong you are? <laughs> yeah. I think he said something like that. Uh, and then Miss Piggy comes along, and they break the fourth wall again when Kermit has to tell Piggy that she's overacting and she needs to cut it out. Right. I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is great. Um, well, I also wrote down that during that time, uh, they're, I guess right then they start uh, going on bikes, bikes throughout the town. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they go on a bike ride through the park. And I'm like, that must have been really difficult to Couldn't film. Couldn't we ride? Yeah, a series of cranes and uh, and lines keeping them upright. And then uh, right at the end of the number, you can see if in the far, far end of the shot, as they're all riding off, you can see two people on bicycles. And one of them is looking back, and it's a big, like, heavy-duty tricycle bicycle. They had all of them hooked to that, and they had to pull this huge, heavy rig. Oh, jeez. And that was Brian Henson. On the bike. His son? Jim Henson's yep, son? Yeah, his son. The wow. guy, I, I got a chance to meet at one point. That's awesome. So yeah, the, the one of his early efforts. Yeah, that was. I just saw how difficult that must have been. Yeah. Uh, so then you flash forward and, uh, what is it, Miss Piggy's fashion show. Did I skip anything? At one point, a synchronized swimming musical scene, but I don't know when that came. That that's, in the, that's fashion show. Okay. So now it's time for um, Lady Holiday's fashion show. She's there. It's another event. She's wearing another luxurious necklace and a lot of jewelry. Miss Piggy's running around crazy. As an assistant uh, capacity. Gonzo's there ph photographing everything. And Kermit comes to show his support. And uh, while she's backstage, uh, Nikki makes uh, a move on her, on Miss Piggy. All right. And she feels romantically conflicted. And he needs to shave the back of his neck. like He, had, he really does. He needed a haircut really bad. He did the whole time. <laughs> um, and right before the fashion show is supposed to start uh, one of the models pretends to hurt her leg and Miss Piggy has to go on her place so Miss Piggy goes on in this glamorous outfit and Lady Holiday announces her and she comes out and then she goes into this fantasy sequence that is called P Piggy's Fantasy or also Miss Piggy 
I didn't know uh, that. Where it's synchronized swimming and diving, and uh, you get to see Kermit and Charles Grodin in like these really classic seventies cutaway, like in a corn in the corner shots. Where yeah. Like, uh, and Charles Grodin is obviously dubbed. Oh yeah. Whole time. <laughs> Happiness, Miss Piggy. What the- It's just a really glorious number. I know that, you know, I read everywhere that it was really difficult to film. It took days because Frank Oz had to like put on scuba gear and then get in her water with Miss Piggy. And oh, they Jesus. did a bunch of, a bunch of reverse filming work. Like a, uh, a couple of shots are in reverse to get the effect that they wanted. And oh, wow. It was just a lot. It was very Busby Berkeley looking like synchronized swimming. It was, it was beautiful. It was really well shot. Mm-hmm. After that is revealed that Miss Piggy while phasing out, has fallen into the fountain yeah. at the fashion show. And as they pull her out, Nikki wraps her in a coat. Oh, but what's in the coat? It is the uh, like the metal part of Lady Holiday's uh, missing necklace that got stolen. It's been planted on Miss Piggy, and she is now suspect number one for the crime. And I think that's around the time where she says to Charles Grodin's character, you can't even sing. Your voice was dubbed. <laughs> it was dubbed. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, very self-aware movie. I love it. Oh, perfect. So uh, Piggy is in jail. Kermit goes to visit her and pretends to be her, her lawyer. With a mustache. With a mustache. <laughs> um, and she says she didn't do it. He says he believes her. And then they kiss through the metal grate and he has mesh marks <laughs> on his face. And she has mesh marks on her snout. So cute. So cute. <laughs> and so it's revealed at one point that didn't Go- Gonzo, I think, is the one that overhears when and where they're going to steal the baseball diamond. He's hiding under a table to get pictures of knees, I think, for a retrospective. Right. <laughs> um, and he overhears when and where they're going to steal the baseball diamond. So um, Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo go back to the Happiness Hotel, rouse the gang because they have to stop this jewel thievery. That's the, for whatever reason, it's on them. Yeah, for some reason. They could have told any authority that would have thwarted it, and Miss Piggy would have been released, and they wouldn't have to do anything. But for whatever reason... But it's a movie! It's on on the Muppets to do this. Um, And they make a really terrible plan on how they're going to get out and how they're going to break in, uh, It's and it's just great. And there was an Oscar the Grouch uh, cameo somewhere in there. Uh, Yeah, well, when Piggy breaks out, she tries to hitch a ride with a trucker. Right. And throws him out. He lands in the trash and Oscar the Grouch shows up and the man says, what are you doing here? And Oscar says, a very short cameo. Yeah. To which the man responds, eh, me too. <laughs> and that's it. It's uh, perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. So there's this great back and forth scene that's probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie um, where Mickey, uh, Nikki and his gang of, of trained female jewel thieveries thieves charles groden charles groden are going through a checklist of all the gear they're taking with them like uh like you know light rewire got it grappling hook got it and they're going through this checklist and then alternately the muppets are then going through their checklist (laughs) glass cutter check nylon rope check computer to programmer check stopwatch check pocket laser check infrared reflex check Portable detonator. Check. Whoopee cushion. I think it's in the bus. Rubber raft. It's got holes in it. Bag of chickens. <laughs> Fake vomit. It's on order. <laughs> Frisbee. No, uh, lost. Matic drill. Check. Computer printout. Check. Radar gun. Check. Walkie talkies. Check. Check. Wax lips. Man, I just had them. Did you leave them in your other pants? I don't have no other pants. <laughs> yo, yo. For sure. Uh, <laughs> I got the paper shit. towels. <laughs> Peanut butter. We ate it all of it. Uh, <laughs> and I just love the back and forth, the seriousness and the awkwardness. Oh, it was great. Um, so then the Muppets go and they try to get in, get into the place where they're holding the fabulous baseball diamond. Uh, which culminates in them trying to get um, animal to eat through the metal bars. Um, then they dress as pizza men and try to fool the guards. 
These are all like D and D scenarios that if you're in a D yeah, group, this is like, this is this is trying to roll on charisma. Yeah, <laughs> this is all trying to roll on charisma. <laughs> um, and so they finally get in, break onto the roof, and then they see Nikki's crew going below, and so they've got to figure a way to get in. So they go in through an open window. Mind you, this whole time, Miss Piggy has broken out of jail and is on her way there also. She's booking it. She's booking it. She steals a truck and then she steals a motorcycle. She, ste- she you know, does Grand Theft Auto at least two times. I think when she gets she's, the motorcycle. She's going back to jail. When she gets the motorcycle, she says, well, you wanted excitement. And I, yeah. <laughs> I wrote down, I think that's a dig at the first movie because the first movie didn't have that much like. No, action, there's no action. Action. So, like, yeah. I think she's like saying, "Well, you guys complain, so here's some action for you, assholes." Yep. <laughs> I like that. Um, and so they decide to do Muppet Ladder to get down, <laughs> where they all hook together and slowly lower down into the room. Were they chased up by dogs, and that's why they all like jumped up on? They started climbing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, and you get to watch a, a really neat effect of them climbing climbing up a drain pipe. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, so they break in through window Muppet Ladder. They stop them just as they're stealing the diamond. And a crazy, I don't even know, very British comedy, like slapstick chase ensues where they're throwing the baseball diamond around trying to play keep away and people are getting hit and hurt. And there's a, an actual sports announcer announcing it like a baseball game. <laughs> and like 10 Muppets are on Charles Groton. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's it, it gets crazy for a little bit. It's a great, great part of the movie, though. Yeah. And then finally, the bad guys are caught. Miss Picky vows her her love for Kermit, and uh, the movie ends, and they're heroes. They get to go back. And they they are the headline on the newspaper. And I just really like this movie. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then it ends with them flying back to the U.S., and they're all in that luggage class. Yeah. And then they all get thrown overboard, and it's them parachuting down onto the ground. And yeah, I love this movie. And I this is the one I think that you would love. And you're right. Classics. Yeah, it was just it's. I think really the enjoyable. next one, your love will wane a little. Bit. <laughs> what's what's the next one again? And um, Muppets Take Manhattan. Gotcha. I've heard good That's things the about that. Motion. It is, but the songs are longer. It's a much more kind of somber, saddish kind of movie almost. Which can be okay if it's. There's done a well. lot of defeat in it, but it makes the triumph at the end that much sweeter. Well, I'm excited. Good because you have Star Trek Three coming up next, which is not the I best. I do. No, no, it's not. We have to get to three to get to four. Right. And then and we four just is have great. to make it through five and six. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but if we're doing ma- major Muppet pictures, it'll be, uh, let's see, Muppet Take Manhattan, and then Muppet Christmas Carol, Muppet Treasure Island, and then we'll see if there's any other as I choose to include. We're doing the and Queen we Latifah the, one. We can do the new ones if you want. We're doing the Queen Latifah one, too. Oh, uh, Muppet Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Because there's, oh. there's not enough uh, Muppet movies to go with the Star Trek movies. so we need Even to... with the two new Muppet movies? Not really, no. God, you're right, especially if we do the new ones. Yeah, because there's new Star Trek movies, too. Okay, we'll just, I'll keep pumping it out. There's tons of specials and little stuff like that. Yeah, man, we'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> do and it. hopefully our listeners won't abandon us. Yes, guys, you need to watch along with us. Uh, watch some of these movies. Tell us what you feel about these movies. Uh, if a lot you... of these movies were probably in your childhood. Yeah. I hope. Have you already seen them? Let us know. Let us know what you thought. Um, also, let us know if we were wrong about anything or if we thought things were good that shouldn't have been good. That kind of thing. That's true. I've got bad taste a lot of the time. Oh, me too. More so than yep. Steve. Steve is more discerning <laughs> than I am. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but now I think it's time to move on to trailer reviews. Here to Play on Nerds, we have developed an interesting rating system to bring to you our ideas on the trailers we're about to review. At the low, low end of the scale, we have Burn It, where we think you should find every copy you can get your hands on and throw it into a barrel fire. Kill it with fire. (laughs) And our next step is Drunk Watch, which means that, yeah, I'd watch this movie. It'd be entertaining if I was under the influence of some kind of substance of some kind. But if I was sober, probably not going to check this thing out. No, not going to see it. Next, we've got We'll See, which is maybe we just don't know enough about this movie to tell what the hell it's going to be. Could be good, could be bad, not sure. Eh. And our next category would be Get the Couch Ready, which means I'm definitely going to check this movie out at home 
wouldn't necessarily pay the big bucks to see it in theaters, but I'm definitely going to watch it at home. So get that couch ready. After that, we have Take a Look, where we are recommending for you, our viewers and listeners, to check out this movie and check out the trailer and tell us what you think about it. We, we wanted to see what you guys think. It looks pretty good, but we're not quite sure yet. Yeah, take a look. Yeah. Let us know. And for our final and best category, we have Shut Up and Take My Money. Shut up and take my money. This looks so awesome, we're going to see it. That's where we cannot wait to give Hollywood bigwigs all of the money that we have earned at work to go see a film for $47. We're so excited, we just have to go see it. We have, we don't have a choice. And that is our A Play on Nerds official copyrighted trademark system for rating our movie trailers. So I uh, picked out a couple of weird ones for Steve to watch because Steve. I, often... I, I like the eccentricness. Of Good. Because Steve often picks out trailers for us, but I picked out these ones this week. Um, Power Rangers trailer number two. The one that uh, actually shows some stuff. Right. None of us really know each other. We're all screw ups. But somehow we were all in the same place at the same time when Billy found those coins. Guys, check out how we glow. I'm blue. Oh, I'm black. What? I am. No, you're not. Do you feel weird? We're strong. I'm saying we're strong. The answer to what is happening to you is here. You five are the Power Rangers. Did I just hear you say we're Power Rangers? Is this some kind of joke? We're talking to a wall. I was kind of expecting a little more. So where were you last night? Me and four kids found a spaceship buried underground. I'm pretty sure I'm a superhero. Cool. Pee in that cup. Power Rangers were a legion of warriors. You must become those warriors. It's just a hologram, like a video game. <laughs> That's a strong-ass hologram. Not a video game. <laughs> you were born for this. I, I will destroy everything. She is pure evil. How do you expect us to stop her? It's morphin' time. It's a lot of gold. This is your destiny. This is your time. Well, what do you think of this one? I'm stoked. I am too. If I can, I will try to go see this movie. It looks like the tone is good and appropriate. It looks like they're staying true enough to keep me interested, um, but they're creating their new path and a new vision. You know, it's not these perfect gold coins, it's these old ancient crystals. You know, they're just dumb little changes like that that I think is really making it their own. And like silly and fun, that's what Power Rangers should be. It shouldn't be taking yeah. itself too damn seriously. It's Power Rangers. It's silly, but it's like, yeah. and the effects look great. Yeah, I like, and I, you know, I like the look of Elizabeth Banks. I love Elizabeth Banks. Now that you get no a better, now that we got a, a better look at her. And yeah. Because like, I wasn't sure at first because there was like one picture of her as Rita for a real long time. Yeah, she has like things in her face now and she's kind of like yeah. creepier looking and like her yeah. teeth, teeth are messed up. In and the rumor is that the plot is that she is the Green Ranger. What does that mean? So in the Power Rangers, the original series, they introduced a evil ranger, the Green Ranger. Who became Towards good that. later, right? Who then became good later, yes. But the Green Ranger was like one of the first villain. Oh, okay. So that's because if you look in her wand, it looks like she has a power coin. There's a, there's a little big theory right now. We'll see what happens. Wow, you've been following this ship pretty close. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking stoked. <laughs> power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. <laughs> so what is your <laughs> final grade on this? Um, I'm going to give it. If I didn't have kids, right, I think right. that's my, if I didn't have a kid is my new rating. Yeah. So it's, that's, if I didn't that's, have a kid, I would go see this a in, second. in theaters. So it's like, it's I would drag Anna to go see this. It's a show and take my money for you, basically. Yeah. Show and take my money without a baby. Right. <laughs> that's the caveat. <laughs> Less baby and more popcorn. <laughs> now, what about, what do you think? Uh, I did a, it's a between a get the couch ready and a drunk watch for me because okay good That's I think good. That's it high. looks like a lot of fun it looks like it's silly where I want it to be silly it's appropriately made so I yeah I'm like I'm gonna watch this one way or another but I mean with alcohol might be fun too yep and, um, and then I, the second trailer was attack of the later hosen zombies <laughs> 
which looks looks like a thing. It's a thing that happened. It seems like young snowboarding hip types at a mountain retreat in Germany. Is that, a, is that right? Sound right? It's maybe. It's like um, a, it's a short and trailer. zombies show up and they have to use a series of uh, snowboard moves and cliche movie tricks to thwart the zombies. Zombies are dead meat. Well, duh. I'm upset because I didn't see any lederhosen in the trailer. Not a single lederhosen <laughs> in the trailer, people. They're already letting me down. But, I mean, there's no known actors. I think it might actually, it may even be in German. What happens on my mountain will stay on my mountain. I feel like I, I recognized one person went, oh, it's a, but, like, that was it. Because they're speaking English in the trailer, but, like, they have German yes. accents. And so, like, I don't know what's going on. It's like those old James Bond movies. <laughs> like all gold over finger. yeah but i mean it looks like a lot of fun and silly oh this is getting a big old burn it really a big old burn get a bonfire going you don't like it. dumb funny horror movies i do but this looks bad like this looks extra triple bad but it's 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 purposely trying to be funny and stupid like that's why i like it yeah all right you don't like funny and stupid yeah that's why i watch the muppets <laughs> no they're funny and smart maybe Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you after next movie. <laughs> but yeah, nah, burn it. Big old burn it for me. Oh, wow. I'm, I said Drunk Watch for sure. Okay. Great, fair. fun party movie. Uh, silly killing zombies in Germany while skiing. It looks ridiculous and fun. That's right. But we're, we're, we're grabbing at dregs here. Basically, there's, there's not good trailers coming out right now. No, no, no. It's a very it's a dry time of year. Right, because we're in Oscar season. There's not anything coming out soon. There's no summer movie trailers coming out. So it's like this is this is the dead zone of crap that we're in right now. So that's why we have Power Rangers trailer number two mm -hmm. and Attack of the Leader Hoes and Zombies. Yep. All right. Before we sign off, I want to do something I haven't done in a while. I would like to do some trivia with our listeners. Ooh, beautiful. You can email us at trivia at a playonnerds.com with the answer. Don't look it up. Don't be that person. Know it. Be honest. Uh, all right. So I want to know if you can tell me what the name of the trumpet player in Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem is named. Beautiful. What is the trumpet player in the Electric Mayhem named? Don't look it up. If you can tell me trivia at a play on nerds, we'll give you a shout out. And if you can tell us how you originally found that out, we'll more believe you. That's like, true. That you didn't look it up. Like, oh, when I saw this when I was 10, like I watched this thing and I believed it. Yeah. So I found out. Yeah. So I like if you it. can tell me his name, I'll give you a shout out. Because I certainly don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a Well, also, we have a thanks to second here. Uh, we have uh, thanks to Mike or at Jarek, as usual, and the, and the 10 Forward podcast for the retweets for our post on last week's episode on Wrath of Khan. Because since it was Star right. Trek related, a 10 Forward podcast retweeted us. That's awesome. Um, awesome. Thank you guys so much. We yeah, appreciate it. That's great. And uh, also, David Kramlich, who is also, I think, Captain Hot Dog, uh, commented on last week's Khan movie review. He said, I hadn't even noticed that Khan and Kirk didn't share screen time. I looked. Like mm -hmm. that Keanu Reeves meme, mind blown. <laughs> and I, I responded to him on, on Facebook. I was like, we actually taught someone something in our episode? <laughs> or we, we wow, enlightened someone on something? educational content. We gave trivia that someone didn't know? That's amazing. So that actually happened. Yeah. Well, That's good. fantastic. Television. The drug of a nation. Reading ignorance and feeding radiation. TV. Its satellite links are United States of Unconsciousness. Apathetic, therapeutic, and extremely addictive. The methadone metronome, pumping out 150 channels 24 hours a day. You can flip through all of them, and still there's nothing worth watching. TV. What are our recommendations? What have you been watching in this past couple okay. weeks? This is so, our new segment. We need a name for this segment, by the way. We haven't come up with it um, yet. Radical, radical Recommends. Oh, that's perfect, Steve. Perfect. Radical let me, recommends. 
Real quick, live on air. We're going to see if it exists already. Oh, there we go. Google it. By the way, Steve comes up with most of the names for these segments. Because look at, he comes up with new names for new segments every week. He's, he's good at it. Nope, Radical recommends is free from what I can see. Beautiful. All right. So what are, what are your recommends um, for the last two weeks? So I'm going to recommend you give something to try. Okay. I'm not saying that it's going to be great. I want you to give it a try. And it's a movie that got really panned real hardcore when it came out. Mm-hmm. But I recently watched, and it had some genuinely really funny moments in it. And that movie is Zoolander 2. All right. I, the, I will say the movie lost its way. But the first 30 minutes are genuinely funny and really do a very good job of setting the tone for the rest of the movie, which is even more over the top than the original and less sort of surreal. So it's less surreal, more straightforward, more straightforward and more over the top. I just like I like fun, goofy comedies like I'm okay with it not being. Yeah, yeah. And that's Oscar why I loved or it. Something. There, there's some great moments. At one point, they reveal that Hansel is living in a hut in the middle of the desert with it, with a um, with an orgy, like literally a group of people. <laughs> one of which is Kiefer Sutherland, and and one of which is a little person dressed as an elf what? with a bow. <laughs> uh, and then after they have an the orgy has an argument. So basically, they pose the orgy like his girlfriend or wife, but the whole orgy is his wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and so it's revealed that the the whole orgy is pregnant, <laughs> including Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> what? what? It's so good. It's right. It, it, explaining it doesn't do it any justice, but it's so funny and caught me so off guard. So I'm just recommending you give Zoolander two a chance. I will definitely obtain That's that. That's my radical the recommend. I think it's on Hulu right now. If you have access, people. Well, uh, my radical recommend segment this week will be uh, in regards to the Oscar movies. Um, if you are aware, you can, uh, as soon as the screeners become available to people to watch them for, uh, judging purposes, they become available online in certain ways. I'm not saying I utilize storks. that. It's a network <laughs> of storks. Right. But I, every year i like watching every one of the, uh, top, uh, the best film nominations. And so I've watched Fences. Fences was, um... It's a it based on a play, and you can tell because the first half of the movie felt very canned and very much like it was a play. Okay. Sec- second half becomes great. It's wonderful. Okay, good. Denzel Washington, and it's just, it's great. Uh, Hidden Figures was fantastic. A lot of fun mm-hmm. to watch, like more enjoyable, like easy to watch movie about okay. these women who uh, were African American who were uh, studying the worked for NASA, right? Right, worked for NASA, and were like basically they called them computers. Back then, they were basically the people uh, running the numbers about the math for the situation. It was great. Oh, La La Land, I also watched, and I made a controversial post on Facebook about this. I know, this. you said you didn't like it, right? Uh, I didn't dislike it, but you it didn't, w- didn't live up to the hype. It was not fantastic. I mean, I do not think, in my humble opinion, not fantastic. Uh, I've seen Ryan Gosling better. I've seen Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone better. They've had great chemistry in other movies. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love, I think it was called. They were great mm-hmm. in that. Uh, the dance scenes weren't filmed very well. They just felt very canned and very muted. Uh, if you want a good musical movie, I wrote my post. Sing uh-huh. Street is fantastic and sh- was looked over for an Oscar. Sing Street is fantastic. You would like it, Steve. You and the okay. wife should watch it. We'll check it out. Sing um, Street. Yeah, it's uh, it's same guy he did once. I never saw once, but I like Sing okay. Street. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and also I watched uh, Netflix's Travelers. Uh, oh, good. Did you see it? What did you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. It's, yeah. it's not like a groundbreaking anything, but it's like it, it was different and interesting and very fun to watch. Oh yeah. What do you think? I love the I love the 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 countdown clock gimmick. Oh, like when someone so basically like yeah, when someone dies, yeah. these travelers from the future are able to jump into their body with their consciousness at the time of their death. Right. And so you get to see a countdown clock until the time of their death and then the countdown clock then starts counting up. When the new traveler is there, right? And it was it's it's very well done. The guy from Will and Grace, uh, Will from Will and Grace, isn't it? Yep, he's Eric, great. Eric McCormick, I think his name is. Yeah, uh, a lot of small time actors that maybe had seen one or two other things. Oh, that's right. About it. A lot of those actors are shared between the Vancouver genre shows. I call it basically huh. all the sci fi shows that are shot in Vancouver. They share like so many actors, and you'll see them pop up like in Continuum. Um, other random shows, Supernatural, mm-hmm. lots of shows that are shot in Canada, like 
Okay. Tons of actors in the Travelers. It's a Canadian show, but it's on Netflix. But okay. yeah. So there you go. Radical recommendations. But yeah, I guess that's it. We're going to come back to you next time, maybe with a Star Trek episode, or are we taking a break? We might we take got? a break, do something different next episode. We'll see. Um, or maybe if we don't think of anything, we'll do Star Trek. We'll <laughs> yeah, see. We'll see if we're lazy. We'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so until then, um, check us out. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of our audience. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, listen to us just babble on and on. Absolutely. So as long as you're willing to keep on listening, we'll keep being your co-hosts. Thanks again, Internet. Stay nerdy, my friends. If you'd like to find out more about us, you can always check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash a play on nerds or check us out on Twitter and Instagram at a play on nerds. We're also streaming live game content all the time on twitch.tv slash a play on nerds fun videos and stuff to check out youtube.com slash play on nerds. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes and leave a review if possible, because that lets us be easily searched in the iTunes search index for podcasts and that way we know if we stink exactly let us know if you hate us or you love us that's always great check us out at our website www.aplayonnerds.com where all this content can be found at the tip of your fingers and you can also always email us at anything at aplayonnerds.com and then check us out on i guess snapchat maybe <laughs> for dick or, or tumblr <laughs> tumblr periscopes uh, you could also throw a rock at us with a message on it carrier pigeons we accept cassette tapes <laughs> i love cassette tapes we just want to hear from you yes please send us anything you like at any social media outlets however you do it check us out and how and how